Hi everyone and welcome back to our PTG for beginners and foundational course, whatever you want to call it, where we're going through the foundational knowledge of a PCG graphs and how you can put them together. In the first two episodes, we took a look at data sampling and how we can sample those points to create different randomized attributes and different uh, spawns. But in this episode, we're going to show you how to do something a bit more complex and we're going to make it so we can place a gate in the middle of our spline mesh. So let's take a look at how we actually accomplish this inside of PCG. Okay, so this is carrying from where we left off last time. And this is generating our spline mesh and fence, like so. Now, I want it, first of all, to pick a point inside our spline mesh. And that is going to be cut away and inserted in with our information about the uh, gate. So the most obvious thing you may think of doing right away is, well, let's just find the middle attribute <clears throat> and then remove it so on the spline sampler remember these are the points we're getting for the spline if i want to say get the middle point so if i do select attribute this is quite useful note because not only does it give you the attribute but in this case we don't really care about the attribute we only care about is the point itself so if i take the point here and rather than using the input source of the last attribute i'm going to change that to use the index attribute and I want it to find the median of it. So what is right in the middle of our attribute range? So in here, it should be index five, basically. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove it from our spline mesh. So to do that, use a difference node. And you put in a difference <coughs> as a point there. And this will output our spline mesh like so. Now, right away, you're going to see an issue. It doesn't actually make a hole. But do notice what it does here. See how it's more stretched out here? That's because with a spline mesh, you can't make a hole in a spline mesh because the spline mesh is connected to two ends. So, well, what do you actually do then? Well, in this case, we actually have to make two splines and two spline meshes. So we're going to separate them out into two separate splines. We're going to have the before the gate and after the gate. So... We first of all need to get all the bits before this point here, the attribute select here. This is going to give us the median of our uh, index. Okay. So with that, I want it to basically say cut out anything higher than that value. Okay. So if I take another attribute select, or the attribute filter, there we go, do that one. And we'll put in the points, which will come from our sampler. There we go. And the filter for this is if the value here is less than the filter of the point now. And if it's inside the filter, that will go to create spline. So we're not going to use a difference. We're going to take that out. And hit that. <clears throat> and you'll now notice our spline mesh will only generate the first half of that spline. So let's take a look at what the attribute filter is actually doing. So over here, the target attribute is looking at the last attribute. So it basically means it's going to look at the last on the list. So if I was to inspect this one, the last attribute is the distance one. Now, this distance one won't appear unless you've got it turned on in the sampler here to compute distance. Very useful one to have, make sure you turn it on. So with that in, it's gonna assign this distance attribute. This was the last one, right? So if I take the last one in, the attribute select here is gonna pick out the median index. So if I was to inspect this one, index zero gives us all these positions. And over here we've got distance of 1,500. So what we're saying is anything that's got a, in that sample here has a distance that is less than the one we've found as a middle one. We want that to go ahead and become inside the filter and spawn a spline mesh. Now, we do also want to spawn a separate spline mesh based upon our outside filter. Okay, so I can do that again. Copy and paste down here, and outside filter there. And with that pasted there, we should see that it's generating now two spline meshes, 
one for before and one for after. Now we've got a gap. Now this gap here currently is always going to be in the middle of our spline, okay, which is, you know, all right, but be much better if we could customize where that's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and make insert an attribute. Now the reason why, not insert an attribute, sorry, insert an input. So the reason why we're getting the middle one is because attribute select here is picking the median of the indexes, which, you know, it's all right. But what we want to do is pick a specific point. So we go from our spline sampler and we're going to select, not select, sorry, um, attribute point index, get attribute from point index. And this is works similar to attribute select. So rather than using a me, like max, min, or median, this gives us a specific input. So what index do you actually want to find? Okay. So we actually want to use this. I'm going to plug that into the filter instead of the attribute select. Now, on this attribute from point index here, we've got the index of zero. So right now, it's just going to give us the first point. So if I put in like three, for example, it's going to move it to the third point. Right, so the trick is now we want to make this index value here become a variable. Now, as we've covered in the past, if you expand up in the bottom here, you get details of the parameters essentially of your nodes, and one of them is the index. Okay, and this is going to be our input. And the, re the way we get our index from the actor, because that's what we're going to be using, is using something called the get actor property. And get actor property, you're going to look at what actor we're looking at. So self will keep us the same because that's where we get our spline data from anyway. And over here, we're going to put in the name of the property. So this will be the name of the variable that we're going to have. So let's give it the name here of uh, gate index. And then the out here, we can just call it index. Be fine. And we're going to plug that now into the index pin over here. Okay, so we're going to get an error, and the error means basically that the gate index value that we put in does not exist on our BP wall. That's fine. We don't, don't. So let's go to our BP wall, and over here, we're going to put in a gate index, and that'll be an integer. File, save. And we'll make this editable as well. Might as well. So now go back to my test example, and that should now work if not i might have to put in again it is in beta there are some weird issues get to property type in gate index there we go weird i know but there you go <laughs> so that will go into there and we can plug it into the index here so that's now reading from our bp wall so if i compile that and go down here and if I click on my wall actor in here, gate index here, I can increase the value here to say three, make the gap there five, whatever I want. And I can scale that up and just use the sliders to move that along as I wish. Okay. Now to add the gate mesh itself, we've got the point we want for this. Okay, it's this attribute point from index. So we're gonna do a, st a static mesh. So let's pop that in there. And we're gonna change the mesh here to be our uh, gate mesh. There we are. So I actually want this to be the point that we've already got from our point index. Now right away, what it's going to do is put it in the wrong place. It's, going to, it's actually here. It's hard to tell because the meshes are so similar. But if I go back to this, the attribute filter, I actually want to change the operator from less than to less than or equal to. Now we've got this gate hole perfect for our gates mesh. Okay. So after that, we're going to take this point out and we're going to spawn another stack mesh at that same point. And this one is going to be our gate door. So let's go ahead and change that to our gate door. And you can see here it spawned it, but again in the wrong place. And that's probably down to how the models have been made. They're not designed for this, obviously. But that's fine. We can just offset that position if we want to. So we're going to go to our 
point between the stake meshes here and we're going to do transform points and plug that in now transform points means we can modify the point and its direction so i actually want to change the offset to this one okay so i want to change the offset to uh the i guess the uh x i guess it would be to be 100 and 100 so make them exactly the same you won't randomize them then okay and if i go back to my ball that's not too bad actually it's pretty close but let's get more accurate with it let's go check out the actual width of our point here um so we go to the mesh let's check out the meshes bounds uh 106 okay so let's do that so 106 106 let's see what that looks like not too bad we can go probably a bit more than that let's do 112 112 Yeah, get in there, get in there. 115. 115. Yeah, looking all right there. Okay. So because we've got this point set up on our our wall here as being an, a gate index here, I can actually type in any value I like here and it will shift it along the length of our PCG. So there you go, a little bit more information about PCG. And if you like this series about the PCG fundamentals, do check out the next episode over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. Not only will we be supporting the channel over there, but you get access to all our videos early for just $1 a month. So a massive thank you to all our Patreon members and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.